Were you just told that you have prediabetes and you're wondering what that means and what you can do about it? Then stay tuned. Hey everybody, Erin here with Healthy Mom Happy Family and thank you so much for joining me here today. Now, if you've been told that you have prediabetes, you're probably wondering what that means. Does it mean that you have diabetes or that you're at risk of diabetes? Or maybe you just wanna know what it means for your future health. And you're probably wondering if you should start eating differently as well. Am I right? So in this video, I am breaking it all down and I'm discussing the ins and outs of prediabetes, what it means for you and what you can do about it. So before we get started, I just wanna remind you that if you are looking for tips and tricks at managing type two diabetes or prediabetes, or even just looking for more healthy recipes, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a new video. Now in today's video, I am sharing with you what prediabetes actually means. I'm gonna tell you if prediabetes means that you're gonna develop type two diabetes and if prediabetes can actually be reversed. And finally, I'm gonna tell you the steps you can take today to prevent and manage prediabetes to improve your future health. Are you ready? Let's dive in. So let's talk about what prediabetes is. So that whole term prediabetes, it really means exactly what it says. It's a precursor to developing type two diabetes. So if you have prediabetes and you've been diagnosed with it, it just means that your blood sugar levels are above the normal level. They're not yet high enough to tell you you have type two diabetes, but they're higher than normal. So I want you to think about prediabetes as like this warning sign flashing at you. It's telling you, act now, act now, so that you can prevent developing diabetes. If you don't start making changes now, you are on your way to developing type two diabetes. But it's a warning, it's like this head start, so that you can focus on making lifestyle changes and you can still prevent that diagnosis. So prediabetes is really this level of insulin resistance in the body. And insulin is a hormone that picks up sugar in our blood and it drives it to our cells to store it for energy. So I like to use this uh, analogy that insulin's like a car, right? So the car goes and it picks up glucose, who's the passenger, drives it to the garage. Now in your normal healthy cell, garage door is wide open, insulin goes right in, drops off the passenger, everybody's happy. The sugar gets into the cell for energy. In an insulin resistant cell, the garage door, it's shut. And so that car brings the passenger to the garage, it won't let it in. And that's pushing the glucose back out into your bloodstream. It starts to accumulate, it starts to rise, and that's why you're seeing these slightly elevated blood sugar levels. Now, the more cells that become insulin resistant, the more they're pushing the sugar into your bloodstream and it's starting to rise. So that's why prediabetes is a warning sign. It's telling you that you have a lot of cells that are insulin resistant, but as more and more cells become insulin resistant, that's gonna to lead to type two diabetes. However, you can reverse insulin resistance in those cells. And the more you reverse those insulin resistant cells, the less chance you have of developing type two diabetes. Now it's also really, really important to understand that this is a silent disease. You do not feel insulin resistance. You probably didn't notice it at all. So if you have been diagnosed with prediabetes, I think it's actually a good thing because if you didn't know about this, you would have no advanced warning. And before you know it, you might develop type two diabetes and have never had any idea you were even at risk. So knowing that you have prediabetes, it's actually a blessing because now you know that your body is insulin resistant. You know that there's something you can do about it to prevent developing a chronic disease. You don't have to just accept it. If we make a few key changes right now, you can reverse insulin resistance and prevent developing type two diabetes. And that really brings me to addressing that common question I hear. Every time I hear from somebody who says, I have prediabetes, they ask the same question. Does this mean I'm destined to develop type two diabetes? And the answer to this, which I think you'll be very happy about, is no. Not everybody who has prediabetes will end up developing type two diabetes. It's a big risk factor, a big one. But like I mentioned, insulin resistance is reversible. So if you take action today and you follow through with it, it is possible to prevent insulin resistance and prevent the development of type two diabetes. But I want you to remember something too, that insulin resistance, it doesn't just increase your risk of type two diabetes. It can increase your risk of heart disease, cognitive decline as we age, even certain cancers. So this is something you should take seriously. Prediabetes means your body has a high level of insulin resistance. We need to reverse insulin resistance in our body to prevent chronic disease. We wanna prevent type two diabetes, but reducing insulin resistance prevents many future health risks as well. 
So when you're thinking about that whole idea of, oh, can insulin resistance be reversed? Absolutely, absolutely. It does take work. You have to be consistent, but you can reverse insulin resistance. And I've seen it in many of my own clients. Now, in order to reverse insulin resistance, you need to make your cells more sensitive to insulin once again. And there's a few ways to do this. So for some individuals who have higher levels of body fat, research has found that when we reduce body fat, specifically that visceral fat, that belly fat, that fat we hold in the midsection, reducing that can reduce insulin resistance. And as little as a 5% loss of body weight can do this, especially when it's coming mostly from body fat loss, not just water weight, we don't wanna lose muscle, but when we reduce body fat composition, that can increase insulin sensitivity. Now, I want you to know you do not have to lose weight to improve insulin resistance. It can help if you have a higher level of body fat, but there are people who don't that are also insulin resistant. And there's a lot of behaviors that can impact insulin resistance in our body. A big one is our physical activity level. The more you move your body, the more sensitive your cells become to insulin. Now, you always wanna to talk to your physician before you start or change any kind of exercise routine. But just being more active, it doesn't have to be exercise. Just getting up and moving more can be a big, big improvement. So, you know, if you get up and walk for a few minutes each day, and let's say you're not active at all right now, but you decide to walk for five minutes every day, and then it's 10 minutes, and then it's 15 minutes, you can build up over time. Now, even when you're working, if you're always sitting at a desk, you can get a standing desk instead. You can wear a fitness tracker to track your steps. All of these things add up in a big way when it comes to reducing insulin resistance. Now, diet, of course, plays a large role when it comes to insulin resistance. The more we eat added sugar and simple carbohydrates, the more insulin your body has to produce. And the more your cells are exposed to this excess insulin, the more they're becoming resistant to it. So you wanna look at reducing added sugar in the diet as much as possible. Now the goal really is to keep added sugar under 10% of your total calories every day, but less is better, okay? The added sugar doesn't really add anything nutri of nutritional value to our diet, so reducing added sugar in the diet is key. And one of the biggest sources of added sugar in the diet is sweetened beverages. So if you're drinking sodas, sweetened coffee beverages, anything that has added sugar in a beverage form, that's a great place to start because those types of beverages don't provide nutritional value. They're not letting us feel satisfied. So we're still eating just as many calories and carbohydrates and other meals, and they have a direct impact on insulin resistance. Now, if you're trying to reduce added sugar in the diet, definitely focus on reading labels, especially on any processed food. You wanna be on the lookout for foods that include added sugar in the top three to five ingredients. And when you see those, you wanna limit those foods as much as possible. So when it comes to carbohydrates too, also try to keep a lookout for those quick digested carbs and choose more complex, slow digested carbs. So whole grains instead of refined grains, whole fruits, whole vegetables, those are gonna be great choices because they provide carbohydrate for energy, but they're more slowly digested. And when they're slowly digested, we have more balanced blood sugar, which leads to more balanced insulin levels, and our cells aren't flooded with insulin, which is gonna make them become resistant to it. Now, when we talk about insulin resistance and reversing it, we can't forget about stress. Okay, stress has a really big impact on insulin resistance. The higher your stress levels are, the more our body releases stress hormones. And one stress hormone is actually insulin. So the more stressed you are, the more insulin is flooding your body, the more your cells are exposed to it, the more they become resistant to it. On top of that, when we have large amounts of stress in our body, this can elevate our blood sugar levels. So we have more insulin, we have more blood sugar, and all those things together can increase our risk of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So you definitely wanna take steps to reduce stress as much as possible. And finally, I want you to make sure you are focusing on sleep. Okay, even one night of poor sleep can increase insulin resistance in the body. Just one night. And it does make it harder to control blood sugar levels. So I do have a video on natural ways to prevent insomnia if you do struggle to sleep each night. I'll link to it below so you can check that out. But definitely focus on sleep too. You know, it's not just our diet, it's not just exercise. Sleep plays a big role. Okay, so now you know what prediabetes is and what you should be doing about it. So I wanna give you my five-step action plan that will help you to start today to reverse insulin resistance so you can prevent developing type 2 diabetes in the future. So first, I want you to start being active each day. You can start with a small goal. It depends on how active you are right now, but maybe you're just gonna walk for five minutes every day. And once that gets easy, you can walk for seven minutes and then 10. 
But whatever you do, I want you to challenge yourself to just be a little bit more active each and every day. The more active you get, the easier it is to maintain healthy cells and less insulin resistance. Okay, so number two is I want you to cut out the added sugar. The more added sugar that's in your diet, the more your insulin and blood sugar levels tend to spike. And on top of that, we know that added sugar in the diet causes your body to store more of that visceral fat or belly fat, which further increases insulin resistance. So what I want you to do is to start by identifying the top three sources of added sugar in your diet and begin reducing them. And if you need help identifying where those added sugars are coming from, check out my video on how to read food labels. I think that's gonna help you because you'll start to see what sugar goes by. It doesn't always just say sugar on the food label. But once you identify those biggest sources of hidden sugar in your diet, you can start to reduce them. For instance, if you drink soda every day, now try swapping it out for some naturally flavored carbonated water instead. That's a great way to cut down on all of that added sugar that really doesn't provide any additional nutritional value and instead is causing blood sugar and insulin spikes. Now number three, I want you to spend at least one minute every morning and every night fighting against stress. You know, sometimes we are so stressed out, we don't even realize it. But that chronic stress that constantly comes day after day, it has a major role on our health. And chronic stress is linked directly with higher levels of insulin resistance. So to help you, I want you to focus on your breathing. And to do that, I want you to practice on belly breathing. This is what I want you to do for one minute when you wake up in the morning and one minute before you go to bed. This deep breathing is gonna to help to curb those circulating stress hormones in your body. And I'll link below to a video I've done where I show you exactly how to implement belly breathing, but I promise it's very, very easy, okay? And it's something you can just start to do in the morning and at night. And once it becomes a habit, once you're really well-practiced at it, it's so easy to implement it any time of day. So when a stressful situation hits, you just take a few deep belly breaths and you'll notice that you feel calmer, you feel more relaxed, and those stress hormones start to reduce as well. Now, step number four is I want you to create a relaxing sleep routine. Remember when I told you that just one night of poor sleep can increase insulin resistance? It just takes one night. So you really, really have to prioritize sleep. And on top of it, if you don't have good sleep, um, poor sleep actually increases appetite and it increases the desire for those simple carbs and added sugars, which makes it even harder to reduce insulin resistance. So I want you to create a really relaxing sleep environment and I want you to focus on quality sleep. So this is gonna start by making your sleep environment conducive to sleep. You know, get rid of the distractions. I don't want electronics in the bedroom. You know, try to not look at your phone right before you go to bed. Turn off the TV for at least 10 minutes before. Make sure you're in a dark room where there's you know, not a lot of noise and sounds. Maybe even use a white noise machine if that helps. And then really try to think about relaxing thoughts, you know, not all the things you need to do the next day, but really shift to visualization of happy, relaxing thoughts that calm you and help you to drift off into sleep. And this is where even that deep breathing, that belly breathing can help because it makes you feel more relaxed, it helps you unwind. And when you get rid of the stress before bed, you can achieve more of that restful night. And finally, I want you to make sure you follow up regularly with your doctor. You know, pretty much you wanna follow up every three to six months, depending on your doctor's recommendation. But remember, when I mentioned before, insulin resistance and type two diabetes, they're basically silent diseases. You don't feel your cells becoming more insulin resistant. And the only way to track changes in your body and to know if you're working and taking you know, actionable steps to reduce insulin resistance and reduce your risk of developing type two diabetes is to go for regular health checkups get blood work regularly. That way you can track what your changes, you know, if they're working. If you're taking all these steps to eat well and to reduce stress and to move more, you wanna know that they're working. And if not, we can adjust and keep making changes until you start to see that insulin resistance reduce. So that's why regular appointments with your physician are so, so important. So there you have it. That is my five step action plan to help you to reduce insulin resistance take control of prediabetes before it turns into type 2 diabetes. So let me know, do these action steps, do they seem doable to you? And do you think they'll help? Comment below and let me know. And if you have any questions on prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, let me know in the comments as well. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a new video. Thanks so much for joining me.